meetings. Um, but no, there is no update with the, with the delivery of that two, the 2,000 pound bombs. That shipment remains paused and under review. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much, Matt. A couple of questions. Uh, uh, it's very nice to hear the State Department talk about the political violence. Uh, last week in Pakistan, similar comment uh, you had made was taken out of perspective a little bit. Uh, because President Trump has been shot as well, and Imran Khan was shot as well. But over there, the reaction was not the way it is in the U.S. So my first question is that Supreme Court of Pakistan, most of the judges favored in Imran Khan. The guy was shot. Political violence in the U.S., all 1,000 people, 600 pleaded guilty, 400 were charged, punishment was given. Foreign minister is charged today in the similar violence that happened in Pakistan a year or two years, uh, a year, more than a year after the political violence happened over there, and he's charged today. The political party is being banned of Imran Khan. Today, the government has decided that. Your entire Congress has decided to rule in that favor. And I have asked, been asking you these things for a year and a half, these same questions, but over there, you are not making the comments that you make here for democracy, political, why is that? So I guess I'm missing what the actual question was so The question here? is that uh, with an ally like uh, Pakistan, why do you not have the same feelings of either political violence we, or we, democracy we, or we, the rule of law? So I think you have missed the very many times I have addressed this exact question from this podium where I have said, of course, we abhor political violence in any country, including Pakistan, and have spoke out against it and condemned it. And we support the rule of law in Pakistan and every country in the world. And we want to see respect for democratic principles and people's fundamental human rights and democratic rights upheld. That's true in Pakistan. It's true everywhere in the world. That's been something I've spoken to many times. So I think the premise of the question with respect is, can, is wrong. Go so ahead. Just one more question. Matt, just one more, please. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in Pakistan, there was a funeral procession of an Afghan poet. Uh, he, he, he was killed in Islamabad. In Pakistan, you know, there's a million Afghans. I've always spoken in the favor of Afghans. But last week, what I saw, and there are 50,000 Afghans with the US wants to pull out as well. There was a funeral procession from Islamabad to his native village in Waziristan. And the entire way, thousands of Afghans were holding Afghanistan flags, chanting against the serving military, political, every leadership you can imagine. And then people from Voice of America, staff members of Voice of America were spreading that on the social media. So two related questions. Are you would in the favor of Pakistan taking some stern actions against those Pakistan, uh, those Afghans, whether it's deportation or, uh, and if you would be interested in moving these 50,000 uh, Afghans with the US wants from Pakistan? and. Lastly, Voice of America is a state-run entity. I do not understand how they take interest in local politics. So I will just say, with respect to the specific incident that, to which you're referring, I'm not aware of it, so I, don't, I can't possibly comment on it. Ryan, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait a second. You're going to let that stand? Voice of America is a state-run organization? I, I've already noted that I disagreed with the number of the premises. They are well, uh, wanted, funded by the United States, but of course they have- Funded by the US Congress. the US Congress, but they have complete editorial independence. <laughs> Question on the point that he was making that this Pakistan Supreme Court did recently.